let let it be known that Jake does not want to do it in my ring. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to beat him in his own game in boxing. Boxing pros have revealed their pick for the Jake Paul versus Mike Perry fight. Although Eddie Hearn isn't familiar with Mike Perry, he understands that the BKFC star will have a difficult night on July 20th when he faces Jake Paul. When asked about the fight during an appearance on the MMA Hour, Hearn said that Paul had a significant size advantage over Perry. Therefore, he didn't think Perry had much of a chance. Hearn mentioned that he had never seen Mike Perry fight, questioning if Perry was a welterweight or a around 200 pounds. He asserted that Perry had absolutely no chance against Paul. You think Mike pulls it off? You think Mike, uh, are you familiar I, with really Platinum Perry? No, I've never, I, no, I've okay. never seen Mike Perry fight. Isn't he a welterweight or something? Well, he fought in the UFC at 170, but in uh, bare knuckle, he's fought at 185. And this is a cruiserweight fight. And what's the fight at? Cruiserweight. 200 pounds? Yes got absolutely no chance. I mean. <laughs> Perry had grown accustomed to skepticism. As a knockout specialist in the UFC's welterweight division, he delivered numerous unforgettable performances, yet failed to achieve lasting success, exiting the promotion in 2021 with a modest 7-8 record. Little did anyone foresee that his departure from the UFC would ignite a new chapter of triumph in combat sports. In 2022, the gritty realm of bare-knuckle boxing beckoned, and Perry answered the call, stepping into the BKFC arena. His debut was a thunderous victory over the infamous Ultimate Fighter competitor, Julian Lane. Perry continued his rampage, notching wins against Bellator standout Michael Venom Page and former UFC champions Luke Rockhold and Eddie Alvarez. His latest triumph over Thiago Alves only fueled his momentum, propelling him into the spotlight and now into a high-stakes boxing bout against the notorious Paul. Perry, known for his versatility across various weight divisions in BKFC, is stepping up to 200 pounds for his upcoming bout against Paul. Renowned as the problem child, Jake Paul has a track record of triumphs over notably smaller adversaries, among them former UFC luminaries like Nate Diaz, Tyron Woodley, and Ben Askren. Hearn made light of earlier forecasts gone wrong with Ariel Helwani, presenter of MMA Hour. Hearn told Ariel that he had predicted Francis Ngannou would defeat Anthony Joshua, cautioning against favoring UFC fighters. He admitted he didn't know much about Mike Perry, but acknowledged Perry's reputation as a tough individual. Hearn wished Perry all the best in his endeavors. Champion. He's like, he's the face of bare knuckle. He, he, come on. Have you seen this guy, Bernard? Errol, you know. this is you. You told me Francis and Garner was going to be uh, Anthony Joshua, and I just said stop he falling in love. <laughs> stop falling in love with your UFC fighters and let, let you know. But look, I, I don't know Mike Perry, but I know apparently he's a tough man. Obviously, he is a tough man. Yeah. So I wish him all the best. Due to their shared history, Hearn might find himself with ample motivation to oppose Paul. Previously collaborators, they joined forces to hype the eagerly awaited April 30th showdown between Paul's Amanda Serrano under Most Valuable Promotions and Hearn's Katie Taylor of Matchroom Boxing and are still collaborating for their November 15th rematch. However, Paul later leveled accusations against Hearn, alleging that he manipulated the outcome of that bout, a contentious split decision victory for Taylor. Hearn filed a defamation case against Paul in response to that charge, and it is still pending. During a recent visit to Puerto Rico, Hearn set aside any lingering drama for a cordial encounter with Paul just before the June 15th Liam Paro versus Subriel Matias event. Moreover, Hearn mentioned that while having dinner at the hotel where he was staying, which incidentally is where Jake lives on the resort, he felt a tap on his shoulder. He turned around and saw Jake. Hearn noted that Jake seemed pleasant during their encounter. They had a brief chat, during which Hearn invited Jake to the show the following day. Hearn remarked that there are still unresolved issues between them but he remains open to having conversations. <laughs> I actually bumped into Jake in Puerto Rico. It's quite funny. Oh. I was having I was having dinner in a, in the hotel that I was staying at. Is actually where he lives on that on the resort. And I was just having dinner and I felt a tap on my shoulder and I turned around it was Jake. Wow. So how'd that yeah, go? Yeah. It was alright. He seemed quite pleasant. Um just had a little chat, said you're welcome to the show tomorrow. Um and that was it, really. So the hatchet's been buried. I mean, we still got issues. Oh, okay. But I'm always open for a chat. However, Jorge Masvidal thinks Mike Perry has what it takes to stop Jake Paul from stopping. The UFC's first ever BMF champion wasn't exactly thrilled about Paul's planned boxing bout against Mike Tyson on July 20th, given Paul's youth at 27 years old compared to Tyson, the former heavyweight champion who is turning 58 soon this month. Nevertheless, the match has been delayed to later this year, as Tyson had to pull out due to a flare-up of an ulcer. On the same date, Paul will still compete in a bout in Tampa, Florida against Mike Perry. Masvidal told MMA 
manias, Alex Behunin about the matchup. I like it a lot more than the Tyson fight. He's having health complications. I wasn't motivated to see that fight. I probably wouldn't have seen that fight, but the Perry fight, I'll definitely be tuning in. I'll be watching that fight. Masvidal's take on Paul versus Perry resonated widely across the combat sports community. At 32, Perry showed unwavering determination, transitioning from BKFC in his prime, opting for bare-knuckle combat over the familiar four-ounce UFC gloves. When Perry fights the nine, one Paul this month, it will be the first time since his disastrous boxing debut in 2015 that he has donned cushioned gloves. Masvidal believes that while the BKFC title holder may be inferior in pure boxing skill and technique, Platinum will rely on intangibles to prevail, aiming to score the biggest win and paycheck of his fighting career by taking Paul's head off. Masvidal analyzed the matchup between Paul and Perry. I think I lean towards Jake the first three rounds. I think with his boxing, his range, he'll be able to keep him up, but I think after that it becomes a dogfight and Perry's going to get his hand raised. I just feel it, man. He could break him down by the fourth or fifth round. Jake's going to be tired from bouncing around and running. He's going to have to fight, and he's going to find out who the bigger dog is. Masvidal mentioned that he believes Mike Perry is willing to take risks and understands his own abilities, particularly in absorbing punches. Masvidal suggested that Perry could use his ability to defend himself with larger gloves, get into the fight, and begin delivering powerful punches. He predicted that mentally, Perry would break down Jake Paul, envisioning Perry gradually pressuring him after the fourth round and potentially causing Paul to quit or knocking him out. Paul has faced adversity and gone the distance with UFC stars in the past. However, the problem child might encounter a challenge with Perry, known for his relentless tenacity both inside and outside the octagon. Daniel Cormier also predicted Perry to beat Paul. He said, It seems as now Paul is ready to take on riskier competition, because for anything that you call him, you gotta call Mike Perry a fighter. He will fight in any arena created because he ain't afraid of Daniel Cormier's analysis suggests that Paul may struggle against Perry's boxing prowess, potentially marking Paul's second professional boxing loss. The boxing world has frequently criticized Paul for padding his record with bouts against lower-tier opponents. Initially, the 27-year-old squared off against retired UFC stars to rack up wins. While he later shifted to facing legitimate boxers, many fans argued that his opponents lacked the skill level to truly challenge him. Critics in the boxing community have often accused Paul of inflating his record by selecting lower-tier opponents. At the beginning of his career, the 27-year-old fought retired UFC stars to accumulate victories. Although he eventually began facing genuine boxers, many fans contended that these challengers did not possess the necessary skill to truly test him. Cormier said, Mike Perry will fight Paul. He will fight him on the street, in a cage, in a boxing ring, or in a bare-knuckle arena. This kid is a fighter. This is the most exciting fight I've had for Jake Paul, but I believe he gets beat on July 20th. The buzz surrounding the upcoming encounter is already substantial. Adding to the excitement, Cormier's prediction has sparked debates among fans, with many analyzing the strengths and weaknesses of each fighter to decide if they agree with the former champ champ's view. Nevertheless, former UFC champion Sean Strickland believes they should have settled it without the gloves. Strickland, a former middleweight champion, recently participated in an interview with MMA Crazy. During the interview, he expressed his admiration for Mike Perry and shared his happiness for Perry's success. Strickland said, I mean, it is just a clown show. You know, I am actually a big fan of Mike Perry. I am so happy for his success. I hope he gets a bag with this one. The younger Paul brother was then criticized by Strickland, who said that the bout should have been fought bare knuckle because he was up against a welterweight. He said, but again, you know, Jake Paul, you're fighting a welterweight. Maybe if it was bare knuckle, it would be cooler, but it's like me challenging a soccer player to an MMA fight. It just ain't the same dude. Since departing from the UFC, Mike Perry has carved out a reputation in bare knuckle boxing, where he maintains an undefeated record. Perry typically competes in the welterweight division and lacks extensive boxing experience. His sole match in the ring resulted in a defeat against Kenneth McNeil in 2015. So, Paul's selection of opponents has once more stirred up the MMA community. Nevertheless, given Perry's inclination towards violence, this fight won't be an easy one for Paul. The problem child is a highly active active fighter, typically engaging in two to three bouts annually. Rather than waiting until November for Mike Tyson, he opted to arrange the Perry fight instead. Paul will enter the fight with both height and reach advantages over Perry. Additionally, the problem child will also possess significantly greater strength when they step into the ring. Perry, a welterweight, contrasts with Paul, a natural heavyweight and seasoned boxer. Paul, much like the Incredible Hulk, is a larger gentleman who uses his size and strength to knock out opponents. Perry, akin to Wolverine, both the character and the animal, is a 
berserker who takes immense pleasure in defeating larger foes. He is quicker, more explosive, and adept at creating challenging angles to inflict damage on his opponents. Although Jake Paul has faced criticism for competing against weaker opponents, he has significantly honed his in-ring abilities. In contrast, Perry has appeared nearly unbeatable since joining BKFC, securing wins in all five of his bouts thus far. Determined to maintain his undefeated streak, Perry will strive to continue his success despite transitioning to a different combat sport. When comparing BKFC fights to traditional boxing matches, one will find only a handful of differences between the two. BKFC adheres to most of the standard boxing rules, but includes a few notable exceptions. The most significant difference is the absence of gloves in BKFC, which significantly increases the physical toll on fighters. Additionally, BKFC and boxing differ in the number of rounds and the duration of each round. Perry's resilience to tough bare-knuckle punches is evident, suggesting he could withstand Paul's blows and keep pressing forward. Conversely, the problem child might struggle with Platinum's powerful strikes due to Perry's exceptional striking skills. However, boxing matches typically last significantly longer than BKFC bouts. Therefore, if Perry can effectively utilize his stamina during the fight, he has a strong chance of fulfilling Cormier's prediction. Meanwhile, Mike Perry tells us he's going to take Jake Paul to task and tells us he's going to kick the problem child. Perry appeared on the TMZ Sports TV show and made two things abundantly clear before his boxing match with Paul. He's extremely fired up and there's significant tension between them. I'm grateful for the opportunity, but it's the men behind the men, the ones uh, behind closed doors making making all this clockwork and um you know, I've earned this opportunity. Perry expressed his determination to knock Jake's teeth in, emphasizing their lack of friendship and his belief that Jake has always harbored hostile intentions towards him. Perry labeled Jake as sneaky and vowed to knock his teeth out, making it clear he intends to defeat Jake decisively. So with that said, Jake, bro, we've never been friends. He's never been cool with me. He wanted to beat me up and he's a sneaky little snake and I'm gonna knock the teeth out of his mouth. Jake, I'll f*** your ass. July 20th, come and see at Emily Arena, Tampa, Florida, days and pay-per-view. Mike Perry's gonna beat this out of Jake Paul. What now? I'm here, this is my chance, this is my opportunity. Mike Perry had earlier informed TMZ that he wanted to face Jake bare-knuckled, but he claims that Paul wasn't interested in that arrangement, so that didn't work out. Still, he has an idea. Perry confidently stated that Jake could remove his gloves while he would put them on, and he would still defeat him. He challenged Jake to a bare-knuckle fight, asserting that even with 10-ounce gloves, he would punch him hard. I've been doing this. You walked in and you skipped the line and you skipped your experience and now it's my turn. Here, Jake can Jake can take his gloves off and I'll put the gloves on <laughs> and I'll still whoop his he can fight me bare knuckle and I'll punch him with 10 ounce gloves. Perry and Paul share some history. They briefly trained together a few years ago. However, Mike doesn't believe he can glean much from that sparring session. Nonetheless, it was sufficient for Mike to recognize that Jake's right hand could pose a potential problem. Mike Perry remarked that he's familiar with Jake's right hand, having experienced it firsthand in their previous encounters. He acknowledged it as Jake's signature move and understands its effectiveness. Perry added that he also possesses several effective shots of his own. He anticipated a tough battle, describing it as a true test of determination and will between them. He's still, I know, I know his right hand. I know it. I understand it. Uh, I understood it back then when he hit me with it. And that's his little, that's his little thing. And I get it. I got a couple of shots that, that I'm really good at too. And um, I've been developing those for the past three, three years. So, we're both in for a battle. It's going to be a fight and it's going to be a test of will. In the end, Perry believes he will defeat Paul by the seventh round. Perry confidently stated that if Jake applies pressure to try to finish him, he will respond by finishing Jake even faster. He emphasized his readiness for the adrenaline rush of the fight night, asserting that he will pose a significant challenge to anyone in the world on that occasion. If he's putting pressure on me at all to, to try to get me out of there, it'll be, a, you know, I'll get him out of there quicker. Uh, the way that I felt in training, uh, the muscle that I put on and the strength and conditioning that I've been putting in, you know, when it comes to adrenaline and that July 20th night, I'm going to be a problem for anyone on this planet. 
In a surprising twist, Mike Perry has charged Jake Paul with using steroids. During an appearance on the Overdogs podcast, Perry was asked about the type of substance testing the fight would entail. He remarked that Paul is going to be hot, attributing it to the side effects of steroid use. Perry said, He's got to be hot if he went from 210 and if he really did go to 230, he had to use something. He had to do something to get there. I don't know how the testing is going to be. They may test me and not test him. That's fine. I've fought people who are on it. I know I've trained with people who are on the juice and it is what it is. Paul has been accused of taking steroids by previous opponents before, such as Tyron Woodley and Nate Diaz, which Paul denied on both occasions. Perry further added, You can test me any day of the week. I eat chicken and steak. I eat rice. I train. And I just love the fight. It's more of a mentality thing for me. Mike Perry is just weeks away from his upcoming bout against Jake Paul. However, fans are questioning whether the former UFC fighter and BKFC champion is adequately prepared for the fight. Most valuable promotions recently shared Platinum Perry's training footage on social media today, adding to the speculation. Interestingly, Perry wasn't originally scheduled to face Paul at all. However, since the clip surfaced online, many have raised doubts about Perry's readiness. Perry is shown in the video working out his core and using pads in the interim. Sometimes I feel lost, bitch. Ooh, my stomach. Eat a bagel with the cream cheese. Huh? Bitch, please. I'm thirsty. He's on the drink. When you send me the picture, I'll put it on the after Jake's MVP shared the clip in question with the caption reading, Mike Perry in the lab at ahead of Jake Paul fight on Saturday, July 20th, Perry dropped in the comment section to write, I'm gonna make all the Lil JP fangirls cry in July. In spite of his extensive experience in the octagon and mixed martial arts overall, this upcoming bout marks his debut in boxing. Despite winning all five of his initial fights in the BKFC, after fans glimpsed the training footage, many are convinced that Jake Paul will swiftly dispatch Perry when they step into the ring. Given Perry's outstanding performance in the bare-knuckle boxing circuit, enthusiasts eagerly anticipated a surge in boxing prowess from the native of Flint, Michigan. One user pointed out a problem with Perry's plank, writing, he not even doing a plank right. Perry's hips were much too high for a plank, which is typically performed with the back parallel to the ground. Someone else was disappointed with Perry's pad work, as the user wrote, damn, I thought Perry boxing skills would be better. Since Platinum has never engaged in a real boxing battle, some mistakes are expected. Another user compared Perry's pad work with their own. That mitt work looked like me when I first started boxing, wrote the user. Perry is likely to be a touch rough around the edges because he has never boxed before either. The following user offers Perry some insightful counsel that many inexperienced boxers find difficult to understand. Please, Mike, put your chin down, the user commented. If not, Perry would enter the shadow world with a clean counter from Paul. Meanwhile, this user feels all of Perry's hard work is for nothing. The user commented, all this just to go in there and throw two punches. Perry's odds of winning are not looking good because the majority of Paul's MMA opponents have not endured long in the ring. Jake Paul, amidst past and ongoing criticism, stands resolute as a formidable fighter who staunchly upholds the belief that an active fighter is a superior fighter. Intrigue lingers over the trajectory he's forging in his boxing journey. Yet, the problem child undeniably adheres to a robust work ethic. A video showcasing his relentless training in the gym has gone viral, drawing comments from numerous fans who offer support and encouragement to the YouTuber-turned-boxer. Of course, amidst the positivity, dissenting voices have also made themselves heard. Tagging his companies, the most valuable promotions, and the newly launched W, Jake Paul wrote, Tampa, I will see you in 22 days with another W via KO. The clip begins with Paul in full boxing gear, looking at the camera and yelling, I'll school Perry, time to get back to school. He begins hitting some devastating combos at the trainer's pads in the next sequence. He keeps working on the belly pads, solid right hooks on a heavy bag after that. Jake Paul blasting heavy bag for Mike Perry, the caption on the screen read. It was finally time for a promotional photo. Jake Paul, while liberally spritzing W deodorant into the air exclaimed, grab some W from Walmart. Nonetheless, skepticism may cloud thoughts regarding the challenge Mike Perry could pose. After all, his sole professional boxing match was nearly a decade ago, ending in a knockout loss. Time to school, Perry. Time to go back to school. At Walmart. Perry departed from the UFC to join the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, boasting an impeccable, undefeated record of 5-0. His victories include notable names like Luke Rockhold and Michael Venom Page. Perry aimed to challenge Paul to a bare knuckle brawl, but Paul declined the offer. However, when it comes to adrenaline and that July 20th night, Perry is going to be a problem for anyone on this planet. Most fans turned out to support the young Ohioan, anticipating he would defeat Mike Perry as decisively as he had his previous opponents. However, some still
still criticized Jake Paul's choice of opponents for his boxing matches. One user admitted that one had to admire the way Jake Paul puts in tons of hard work and remains persistent. Always working and grinding, gotta give respect. The following admirer declared complete confidence in Jake Paul's words. They seemed confident that the problem child would defeat Mike Perry in boxing for the second time. They said, absolutely Jake, you are gonna knock out Perry easily. Encouraging Jake Paul to persist, one fan noted the YouTuber turned boxers impressive speed and agility. The fan suggested that if they were in Mike Perry's position, they would be extremely concerned watching Paul's rigorous preparation. They appear convinced that the MMA and bare-knuckle boxer may struggle to maintain his composure in the ring. Looking sharp, I'd be nervous if I were Perry, but he doesn't have nerves, so keep grinding my brother, the fan said. Where there are supporters, skeptics often follow closely. For example, one critic highlighted that Jake Paul tends to avoid bouts with current active professional boxers, opting instead to challenge those who lack professional experience or are past their prime. The user said, Jake will fight anyone who isn't a boxer or if they're retired. Similarly, the next follower echoed the common complaint against the problem child. They criticized the YouTuber turned boxer for facing opponents who are significantly older, well past their prime or semi-retired fighters. LOL bro only fights people that draw social security. Despite criticisms, it's widely expected that Jake Paul will easily penetrate Mike Perry's defense. Following this, he should prepare for a November showdown with Mike Tyson. However, the success of this highly anticipated and controversial fight against Iron, Mike largely hinges on the readiness of the boxing legend. Jake Paul is currently thriving in business. Together with his friend Sean O'Malley, he has launched W, aiming at the highly profitable men's personal care market. Whether in the ring or beyond, the problem child is cementing a legacy of success. In addition, Jake Paul has replied to Mike Perry's recent statement, in which Perry quoted boxing legend Mike Tyson. Paul's fight promotion, Most Valuable Promotions, shared a post where Perry can be seen stating that he enjoyed being punched in the face. Perry mentioned that he's had a plan all along, acknowledging Mike Tyson's famous quote that everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Perry added humorously that unlike most, he actually enjoys getting punched in the face. The problem child replies to Perry's remarks in the second part of the video, labeling him an idiot. Jake told Perry that his willingness to get punched in the face made him an idiot. He explained that what made him a good fighter was his aversion to being punched and his dedication to avoiding it, emphasizing that this was what he intended to impart to Perry in their boxing endeavors. You know, I've had a plan this whole time, and I know Mike Tyson says everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face, but I like getting punched in my face. That, that's because you're a f idiot. What makes me good at fighting is I don't like getting punched in the face and I practice not to. That's what I'm going to teach you in the sport of boxing, you little b Jake Paul is confident that he'll easily handle former UFC welterweight Mike Perry. Recently, the 27-year-old posted a video on his YouTube channel discussing his upcoming bout against Platinum. Paul said he would stop Perry in the first three rounds of their fight. He said, My official prediction for the fight, three rounds or less, calling it now. These guys can't hang with me. Nobody's really been able to see my skill from the past year. I've had new coaches. Development has gone amazing, and I'm excited to put on a performance on July 20th. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.